All right. I am Manslave, and it is 9.22 p.m. on June 5th of 2013. I just logged into, um, onto, uh, YouTube just a few minutes ago, and, um, I'm going to screenshot uh, what I'm saying to a person by the name, by the name of Joel Handerlack. And about an hour ago, in the 8 o'clock hour, uh, on June 5th of 2013, uh, he started uh, posting uh, some comments on a video of mine about um, a video of mine titled, Woman? War Criminal? What's the Difference? And uh, it's hour one of the video. And, uh, so this guy, who doesn't know any better, uh, he, he starts commenting, and I'm gonna keep him around, um, because he's just, he, he's, he's gonna become one of my future teaching tools, um, ninja, uh, you know, he just, he's just, Okay, his name is Joel Handerlack. That's J O E L H A N D E R L A C K. And maybe I should make this a response to him. Um, um, I'm going to check him out on a YouTube, see who he is. And, um, well, yep, young guy. Yep, late teens, early 20s. Um, and you look for his activities, and how long has he been with YouTube? Wow! Joined up on May 29th of 2013. And, um, okay, we look on the discussion part of his channel. Doesn't have any comments or anything. Doesn't have anything in the About uh, tab other than when he joined up, which was May 29th of 2013, so that was, what, less than a week ago? Let's see. He has no videos. And let's see his activity. Um, the only activity he has for his whole channel is that an hour ago, in the 8 o'clock hour on June 5th of 2013, he commented on um, a video of mine. So this guy has been on YouTube for less than a week, and the first and only thing he does so far is to comment on uh, my YouTube channel. Well, the video that I made titled Women, or, you know, the, the video that I made... Um, back in January that I finally got uploaded like, I don't know, two months ago. Um, <clears throat> or whatever, the video that I made is titled Woman? War Criminal? What's the Difference? He starts out saying, um, here's what Joel says. He says, Hi! You are what is commonly known as a radical sexist. You seem to have this image of women uh, being pathetic, worthless, and pieces of shit. Um, take a look at your chest. You have nipples, correct? Now I'm gonna. I'm just gonna interject here. Why do I care? And then he says, "This is a female characteristic. The male body evolved from the female body." Uh, in almost every animal kingdom, females are the ones that hunt. Really? Okay. Then he goes on to say, Women need feminism. Of which I would ask, why? Well, if so many of their goals have been achieved, then, then why is feminism still needed? You know, they, they're just going to keep beating the, the same... Adamantium, you know, the, the the dead horse made of adamantium. That no matter how much they kick it or beat it, it will never turn to, you know, 
gelatinous mush because and it, what it means is the, the argument will never end they'll just keep whining and everybody will believe them no matter how ridiculous or or whatever <clears throat> okay joel continues to say feminism is fighting for equal rights between w men and women um of which I would say, well, then why is it called feminism? Why is it not called equalityism or humanism or whatever? But he goes on to say, you know, feminism is about fighting for equal rights between men and women, not hating men or establishing dominance as a higher sex to be continued, because there is a 500 character limit on YouTube. <clears throat> and then, uh, this ignorant man, Gina, goes on uh, to say, Take a look at the wage gap. Men get paid more than women because of a stereotype that women are only good for sex, uh, cooking, and reproduction. Well, Joel, I would tell you then that the people who perpetuate that stereotype are the same gender that, ne that needs to take responsibility for what they do and ask themselves why they perpetuate that stereotype of sex, cooking, and reproduction because it's the female gender that you pedestalize who's been doing it. Okay? You know, that's that's how they, like, get a man to, like, decide to let him shack up with them or whatever reason. Okay, now Joel goes on to say, This is a view of radical sexism based upon... The fact that men are on top of women during sexual intercourse. Well, not all... Okay, Joel, th this is where you're misguided. Uh, this gets into the differences of personal preference for sex. Okay, because... <clears throat> uh, some women like to be on top. Some women like it from behind. And then all kind of other weird ways. Um... So, Joel, you need to get a clue. Okay? And, you know, the age that you are, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be curious as to whether or not you've even had sex yet. So why would you even know what you're talking about? Okay. And then Joel goes on to say, This is the reason that women are dis disallowed education, work, or places in the war throughout history. Can you, can you believe the guy actually really said this? Because, you know, I've seen a video, like, on, from, like, Channel 4 in England, or, like, on the BBC or something, that Man, Woman, Myth featured in his documentary, where women talk about how, you know, they, they um, you know, as proof of women fighting on pirate ships and all that other stuff, that, like... <clears throat> That, you know, she came, that, that a woman, there's a re historical, supposedly, a historical record of some woman coming forth to claim some kind of reward for, I don't know, somebody, I don't even know, you're just going to have to go look at it. And you need to go pet one, but you won't, buddy, and you're full of hate, and well, you, you just don't got a clue. <clears throat> Alright, I'm just kind of goofing off here, so so please excuse the expression. Alright. And, um, now, uh, he says, um, feminists are fighting to regain what they deserve. They deserve equal payment and equal treatment, equal pricing and equal advertising, and, and he goes on to say, to be continued. And then he goes on to say, females were... As far as science suggests, the first in any organism. They made males out of mutations that grew from asexual reproduction to reproduction, reproduction involving two parts. Females are not worthless or pathetic as you stereotype, as uh, your stereotype of feminist is nothing like what feminism truly is. I believe you need to open your mind. 3 slash 3, the end. <laughs> okay. Now to that comment, I'm saying, Joel, we gotta talk. 
Okay. Now. Uh, and I say, now. A typical feminist would have blocked you by now. Um. Um. I'm going to say, I'm going to take out now. I'm going to say. A, a typical feminist would have blocked you by now after the first comment that came through, which they didn't agree with, <laughs> which is true. I know that because sometimes I watch what is said on uh, the Pesky Dames YouTube channel, and I always know when those Pesky Dames log in because the comments disappear all of a sudden. And, uh... Hmm. <laughs> I mean, like, what am I, like, I started making this recording because, I, like, what am I going to say? I mean, Joel, you, dude, we're going to have to have a long chat because th there's so much stuff you don't even know. And where do you get all this stuff from? I mean, you just whine on, you know, you just say all this stuff, and all you do is pedestalize the female gender. I mean, you offer no real substance, Joel. I mean, and like, and, you know, I don't think that I'm going to block you, you know, because, well, you know, I don't want to be like the feminist, um, and, uh, you know, that's the thing, you don't even have to say something mean, it's just, like, the stuff that's said on the Pesky Dames YouTube channel uh, to the pesky dames seems pretty reasonable. Matter of fact, it's I'm surprised at like the the art form of being soft, and yet the pesky dames don't want to hear it, so they block it. You know, you tell them to grow up, stop you know false flagging people for reasons that like don't even like you know logically hold water. You know. Uh, these, okay, the Pesky Dames put up videos as public on, fa you know, like publicly shared on YouTube. And then whenever, you know, someone else takes a clip from that video and then puts it in another video and just does a video response to it, then the, the those Pesky Dames argue that their privacy is violated? No, I mean, that's just dumb. But yet that's what they did. You know, they, they, um... You know, if they didn't want people reusing their videos, maybe they should have put some kind of disclaimer saying that we do not entitle you to use, you know, excerpts of our videos without permission. That's what they should have said, but no, that's that's not what they did. They just whine on and just act like, you know, that they're a victim. See, Joel, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to come to grips with the fact that there's a differential between what women say and what women do uh, for very much of the time. You got, Joel, I want to tell you that you don't understand the female mind. Now, Joel, I used to be almost exactly like you. I mean, I look different. But in terms of my, um, my perceptions of the female gender, I, I used to be very much the same as you, when, especially when I was your age. Because my grandpa indoctrinated me with all this stuff about, you know, he would say that there's nothing better than Mother Nature and the female human being. He used to say that, you know, man has kept his thumb on woman's forehead for thousands of years and just whatever. <clears throat> you know, and, but then a little over 18 months ago, you know, I started about, yeah, 18, 19 months ago. Yeah, about 19 months ago, back in the, uh, the fall of 2011, I really had to ask myself, why is it that women say that they want a nice guy, but yet they turn down so many nice guys and pursue the types of guys whom they later will label as jerks or, or assholes or whatever? <clears throat> I mean, why is it that they turn down the geek or the nerd or the, the awkward nice guy who will do, like, anything that they want, anything that the women want the guy to do, and yet they t they reject this guy so they can get with, with, with some guy that's got tattoos and a prison record and, you know, and that sort of thing. I mean, why? I mean, we see that they do it. Now, you can argue on about how they don't have self-esteem or whatever. Well... 
there's a problem because, you know, or, or that, like, they, they can't seem to get themselves out of a bad relationship or whatever with a bad guy. Well, they actually do. They have the power to... I noticed that a woman can kick a guy to the curve like that the instant she wants to. I see, Beyonce sings about it, you know... <clears throat> Um, uh, Katy Perry sings about it. You know, a bunch of these women do it. You know, and then women in my own community do it. You know, they accuse the... Here's what happens. They they get tired of the guy for whatever reason. It could be anything. You know, he doesn't have the same interest as her. Or he just... Well, like, they talk about... Well, Beyonce talks about it in that song called Next X. You know... Um, you'll just have to listen to that song, and that's sung by Beyonce. And um, they they lose interest in the guy for whatever reason. It could be a multitude of reasons, or just one particular reason, or whatever. The point is, they lose interest in the guy. But if they if they were just up and and just leave him or whatever, then it would look like the woman has commitment issues because she is the one who's not staying in the relationship. But yes, she wants to dignify herself and not look like the aggressor. She doesn't want to look like the, the problem maker or whatever. So what she does is she creates a dignified exit strategy in which she accuses the guy of cheating. And the definition of cheating is so skewed from time to time. Notice the double standard, the differential. Um, <clears throat> for example, in what happened with Kristen Stewart... Uh, and Robert Patton, uh, Robert Pattinson, about a year ago, um, you know, in what was it, late 2011 or whatever, Robert Pattinson was was photographed sitting in the back seat of a vehicle, holding hands with a female friend of his, while other people were operating the vehicle and in there. It was, you know, a group of him and his friends. <clears throat> okay, and then. Um, and then, um, well, you know, Kristen Stewart found out about it and made a big deal, made a big fuss, called him, you know, just, just drug him through the mud, made him feel horrible, you know, called him a cheater, made everybody, you know, uh, think this guy had fidelity problems. Less than a year later, what was it, six, seven months later? Well, she cheats on him, you know, with a married man. She, she lures a married man into, you know, um, uh, risking his marriage to be with her, uh, <clears throat> you know, Kristen Stewart, and, you know, the director of Snow White, uh, you know, that Kristen Stewart was in a movie with. And then she cheated with somebody else. She cheated, she cheated twice within six months on Robert Pattinson and yet expected him to accept her back into his life. I mean, it totally devastated him. I mean, like, he just... He, it really depressed him because it's a form of intimidation and bullying uh, and intimidation and bullying what uh, Kristen Stewart did when he was just holding hands with his female friend. Uh, whereas Kristen Stewart, a few months later, has an affair, you know, with, with you know the director of the movie she's in and all and all that, and then cheats on Robert Pattinson twice with two different guys, and expects. Robert Pattinson to forgive her, but yet she blew it all big out of proportion whenever he did less of an offense than what she did. Holding friends with a female friend. And we see this time and time again. When a woman wants to leave a guy, she will. She will leave when she wants to. And she will pick up on, a, on another guy. She will pick up another guy almost like that. Uh, men are dumb enough to fall for it because, well, you got to understand, uh, you need to look into Harlow's monkeys and understand the roots of gynocentrism. Joel Handerlack, there is a lot you need to learn. A lot. I mean, if you still believe this garbage that feminists spew, you know, about the wage gap, buddy, there's a lot you got to learn. I mean, you're going to, I mean, you look like you're like, what, maybe 20, 19 or something like that. You gotta learn a lot. I know I used to spew the same garbage that you do. Look at the wage gap. You know, I noticed in my 
<clears throat> in my workspace and the disposable human doing notices this also. How many times you see a woman doesn't want, want to work a full day for whatever reason? My feet hurt. My belly hurts. I got a woman's troubles. Well, I got an appointment. Whatever reason, she doesn't want to work a full shift. And, you know, the disposable human doing had to deal, deal with this a year ago when he worked at Wendy's. You know, what typically happened almost every day of the week, almost every day of the week, is after a certain point in the evening, the girls wanted to go home and hang around with their guy friends, you know, or their boyfriends, or go out on a date, or whatever. <clears throat> the point is they didn't want to be at work, you know, dealing with customers and making sandwiches and, you know, packaging fries and, like, whatever. So what they do is they whine to the manager, who was pretty much all female management there, and say, oh, I don't feel good. And whatever. And they got a... Out of a seven-day week, and out of like four or five days of being on the schedule, they'd only actually work two or three days. You know, like they'd call in, you know, and let's say out of a, a six, anywhere from a six to seven hour scheduled work shift, you know, they'd only work four or five of them, you know, four or five of those hours, you know, they would only work no more, I assure you, no more than seven-eighths of their shift. <clears throat> Some of it I was there for. I mean, I didn't work at Wendy's, but I'd you know go there and eat and hang around, you know, with my friend on his on his lunch break and all that. You know, the disposable human doing, also known as the abbreviation of DHD. Uh, he's my colleague that's in some of my videos, and he dealt with this every day. You know, and it's like they just you know and somebody's three weeks pregnant and they're like, oh, my little baby and the baby's just really mine. Like, you know, they're like, they just whine and find excuses for why they don't want to do anything and for, for, why, <clears throat> for why they want to go home and all that. Well, guess what? So, like, a sizable portion of the female, um, you know, work shift there at Wendy's at this particular location. You know, they go home. You know, a couple of them go home early. You know, almost every night of the week, and wouldn't finish their shift. And not only did they get away with it, but also, well, somebody had to pick up their duties of, you know, like, you know, emptying out the fryers, changing out the oil, you know, cleaning, you know, each station and all that in the fast food restaurant. Well, guess who it was? The guys. You know, it's almost like this. Me and DHD talk about this. It's it's like this kind of, you know, analogy. It's like, you know, it's like after an evening of fine dining. Well, somebody's got to pay the bill. Somebody's got to pick up the check. You know? You know, it's just, oh my God. And then look at this, Joel. Your evidence... You are evidence of being just another guy, another guy who puts women up on a pedestal, who submits and bows and scrapes and, and, and totally serves a female. I mean, <clears throat> why did you even come on my channel and even comment? I mean, like, you're free to do so. You know, I don't really have a problem with it, but my, my point is, if I'm such a dipshit, then why are, you know, and if I'm so misguided, why, why don't people just ignore my channel and pretend it doesn't exist? Why do they got to come on here and actually, do they think they're going to do battle with me and correct my view of thinking? Joel, you do not know the shit that I've been subjected to in my 33 years of existing on this planet with the shit that happens. And <clears throat> I'm serious. Joel, I didn't get my first date till two weeks after my 30th birthday. How would you like to go the first 30 years of your life doing everything that women say that they want you to do? Doing what's expected. Treating them the, the way they say they want to be treated. All this other kind of stuff. You know... 
How would you like to be told, well, buddy, you just got to ask a girl out. And then when you do, oh, I assure you, rejection is the least of the things you have to worry about. You know? Um, and, and, and here's another thing. Here's a problem that really plagued me, and it really got on my nerves. Girls would flirt with me. And, and this happened to the disposable human doing also, and it's happened to countless other men. I hate it. Where a woman will flirt, and, and, and she will persistently flirt with you. No matter how much you try to ignore her. Because I know from personal experience, almost four years ago, uh, a girl did this, and, you know, and... Uh, and another one since then. Um, actually, there's, there are a few that do this to me. But, you know, you know. so this girl, you know, I'm just so sick of it. Time after time again, in this one situation, she flirted with me until, until the point in which I became interested. And I'm so sick of this cycle where a girl doesn't feel marketable or, she, her, or her self-esteem is low. <clears throat> Or whatever. She will flirt with a guy until the guy becomes interested in her. I mean, she will persistently flirt no matter how much he tries to do his job and ignore her. How about this? How about this one? You know, it's like, here I am. I'm trying to freaking mop the floor. And these girls keep asking me about my relationship situation and if I've ever had a girlfriend and they won't shut up, they won't leave me alone, two of them are doing it at the same time, you know, they, they won't fucking let it be, they won't just let me say, no, I've never had a girlfriend, you know, or whatever. And they, they just won't leave it alone. Then they ask me, why have you never had one? Well, are you interested in girls? Well, do you want a girlfriend? They just won't fucking shut up. They just keep doing it. And then they'll do all kind of stuff to get your attention, squeaking their feet around you all kinds of unnecessary amounts of times. And then they don't do it when they're off far away from you or whatever. They, they grin at you a certain way. Really, it constitutes sexual harassment because I know that, you know, from, from experience and then other people's experiences that, that you know, I, I deal with and talk to, we we as guys we know that well the the pickup artists and the pussy beggars they don't know because they've just got temporarily lucky and haven't got you know consequences heaped upon them yet. <clears throat> but a lot of guys know what it would be like if we treated women that way, you know, and it's just sad. And but anyway, you know these girls they wouldn't leave me alone. I remember. You know, cleaning the bathroom and all that, and you know, prop the door open, let the chemicals vent out, and all that, and and <clears throat> a small bathroom anyway, you know, at a store, and you know, and then clean the bathroom, and then I'm trying to walk out of the doorway. Well, this chick comes up, you know, a coworker comes up, fucking blocks my path, won't let me out of the doorway, and then has a spray bottle. And points at my chest and then acts like she's going to squirt me in the chest. Why? Why do they do that? Why is that essential to the functions of the workplace? Why is it even done? You know, it's like, why do they do this? And it took me a while to figure it out. Okay? Because um, I was puzzled for a while. But I noticed, you know, there's, the, you know, see, here's how you notice, here's how you learn about things. The universe, it seems like almost the universal way of, of like, how things are done, or learning, or teaching, or whatever, or encoding information, however you articulating, conveying information, it's based upon attribute and context, are almost like the primary functions of, like, expressing information. You know, there's the attributes of what something does, or whatever... And then there's the context of when it does it, so that you're learning exactly why it does it. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, it just, I mean, it just any, anything, from mechanical objects to electrical objects to policies to people's behavior, you know, physics, all kinds of types of science, chemistry, engineering, whatever, 
Okay, <clears throat> these things happen. All right, so I notice this cycle where a girl will flirt with a guy, and, and any guy will do. Any guy will fit the bill for, for this purpose. You know, uh, and what they do is they're testing their marketability. The woman tests her marketability. She flirts with a guy um, until he becomes interested in her, and then when he expresses interest, she acts like it's a problem. She acts shocked and surprised, and then when he pursues her, she plays the role of a victim and, and, and actually puts herself in the damsel of distress situation. What creepy guy won't leave me alone? He's a mouth breather. He's a stalker. Oh, he don't make me feel comfortable. You know, he makes me feel uncomfortable. All this kind of stuff. I've seen it time and time again. It's happened to me and several other men. And all that. And then, and then, so they get validated because, the, the, you know, their marketability is proven because you, you expressed interest in them. You know, you're the hypothetical person in the situation. And then they get double validated when other guys come to the rescue, you know, trying to protect them from the creepy guy. It's like, wow, look at all these people, you know, they, they care about me. And, and, you know, and it's like all kind of stuff. Hey, get this, Joel. How about false rape allegations? Yeah, you want to you want to address that one? Uh, yeah, that that's very well documented. You might want to look into the Kathy Tratola uh, false rape allegation video where some guy was lucky enough to catch a woman in the act switching up her narrative and actually fabricating one out of thin air. You know, and the video starts for whatever reason. You know, this woman and these two guys are up in this one guy's room. It's some kind of bed and breakfast or whatever. This video surfaced in the first few days of September of 2012. <clears throat> and <clears throat> anyway, for some reason, the woman is punching him and, and like kicking him and all that. And you can see, because he's got his video camera and he's pointing it at her and she's just basically physically abusing him and assaulting him and all that. Okay. <clears throat> well... Um, you know, he says, why are you hitting me, lady? And she's, like, hitting on him some more, just punching him, kicking him and all that. And then he kind of slips up and says, why are you videotaping me? And I think that drew attention to his, his video camera. Now, she interpreted it as a recording device, a audio recording device, because instantly, instantly, she just switches her narrative. I mean, she just fabricates a narrative, almost like it's a... a uh, split personality just coming to life all of a sudden. and But I think she knew what she was doing. I mean, you can definitely tell. <clears throat> and she said, You try to rape me! <laughs> oh! You see, the way her body motion, the way her body language is, it is totally inconsistent with her voice tone and what she's saying. You know, later on in the video... You know, the guy is telling her, to, the guy who she's accusing of rape tells her to leave his room. He says, you know, get out of here, you know, leave, call the cops, meh. And she says, you won't let me leave, you know. And here she is standing in the doorway, and you know the door's open because you can see light coming through the doorway from out in the hallway. You can see objects out in the hallway and all that. The door is wide open. She's standing in the doorway, slamming her hand on the door, saying, You won't let me leave! And yet she's banging on the open door, and all she has to do is take three steps sideways, and she'll be out of his room. You know what I mean? She is trying to frame this guy as a rapist, and, <clears throat> and why? So that she can get her way. I mean, so that, like... So in the event somebody ever did see that, come on, look, Joel, look at how this stuff really works. <clears throat> now that is a cold revelation. And you can look at the video. The woman's name is C-A-T-H-Y, Kathy, and then her last name is T-R-E-T-O-L-A. And you can go look it up on YouTube, and, you know, if you need, if you have trouble finding it, hey, I can find it for you. Matter of fact, look on my YouTube channel, okay? 
and I do a analysis on it, commentary and analysis, uh, which I could do even more on it. But, you know, Joel, deep within these, these beautiful flowers that you think women are is a deep secret that they keep about themselves. They just... And I, I've studied this stuff from observation. You know, it's like... It, it, always, it always puzzled me that there were things about women that didn't just... that just didn't quite add up. Now, not all women behave like this, I acknowledge. Um, however, I will say this, Joel. All women have the potential for this negative behavior just like all men do, because all humans have this potential for this destructive, negative, selfish behavior. It is actually universal human nature. However, it can manifest itself uniquely according to gender because of, um, because of differential treatment, uh, because of hypoagency and hyperagency. You need to learn the difference between them. Now... <clears throat> This is not something that I just made up. If you've worked fast food or retail or any other service industry job, you will notice that there is a differential of treatment between customers and employees. Customers get to enjoy the privilege of hypo-agency. They're not held accountable for what they do. They can trash a place. They can break stuff. You know, you see it all the time. Even the amazing atheist talked about it, you know, and I'm going to repeat this again like I've done in a previous lecture or, you know, whatever, um, where the amazing atheist, he talks about, you know, people, there's people that go into, you know, a restaurant and they order a sandwich and have extra mustard put on it and then they get the sandwich, and they, you know, and then they, they, they look at it and they get mad and they throw it down and they say, I said no mustard, <laughs> man! And then they try to, basically it's a form of robbery. They are trying to pretend to be dissatisfied as a customer, exploit the policy of customer's always right, customer satisfaction, meh. And then they basically pressure, socially uh, and emotionally pressure, uh, the, the you know fast food employee or the restaurant employee, whatever place you go to, to give them free food or extra food or to try to make things right. Now, the, the employee is expected to toe the line, jump through the hoops, you know, sacrifice for the, 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 the satisfaction of the customer. And even management has to do this. I mean, you see how it is. And what it does, it emboldens customers to be extra selfish. And what it does, it reinforces their negative behavior. It teaches them that that's how you get results, is you got to be rude to people and step on them and all that. I've seen this from years in the service industry. The disposable human doing has done it also. I mean, now this is this is universal human nature. I see both men and women doing it. And what it is, it's it's selfishness. It is it's just all kinds of things. Entitlement, attitude, it's all kinds of things. But it, it is universal to the human species. Now, as we see a division of treatment between employee or business owner or whatever, you know, the worker and the customer, okay, there is a similar division and dis uh, disproportional treatment according to gender, okay? Um, now, it's not always 100% uniform, but it is a general trend. I mean, you talk about wage gap... Uh, Joel, that's pathetic. Wa wage gap, really? R really? Come on, Joel. Why did you go there? You know, and I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful or whatever. I'm just asking, why did you go there? Why did you go to something as pathetic as the wage gap? When you can look at the, you know, at the workplace death, uh, you know, you can work, you can look at the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the numbers for the, the work, you know, the workplace fatalities. And look at it. What is it? Around 
uh, uh, fatalities of men in the workplace and what, maybe five or so percent fluctuating uh, of female workplace fatalities or, you know, workforce fatalities? Come on. Really? Oh, really? Jo Serious, Joel? You're actually going to bring up something as insignificant as the wage gap. And look at it. Honestly, it is women's choices. When they choose not to work a full shift, see, it's a thing. Where the disposable human doing worked, men and women were paid equally, you know, especially starting out, you know, the minimum wage of seven uh, $7.25 an hour. You know, an equal, <clears throat> you know, a, a, a male and a female both coming into that job, you know, starting out at that job, you know, got paid the same wage, seven twenty-five an hour, okay? But, at that location, at that store, at that restaurant, men took home bigger paychecks every pay period. Why did they do that? Because they were the ones that got stuck cleaning the grill, changing out the mayonnaise, slicing tomatoes, shredding lettuce... And and all the and cleaning floors and scrubbing toilets because the gender that you put up on a pedestal and choose to worship because you're naive enough to think that they'll reward you and, and give you the comfort feelings that you desire, the female gender chose to go home early from that job. And this is something that me and the disposable human doing witness so much. <clears throat> you know... It just it, well, he works at a a appliance parts dealer place right now. It's a comfy air conditioned job, you know, starting at ten dollars an hour, sitting on you know sitting in a chair, typing on a computer, and women there, a lot of the women still don't take the job seriously. You want me to go get some of the recordings of the conversations me and him had? about what goes on in his workplace? I mean, really? You know? I mean, it just... Seriously. Okay? And then how about this? How about the recording that I made on this very same voice recorder? You know, like, I was... Well, one day I was at my job. It was on a Sunday. And... <clears throat> It was toward the end of the shift, and they were counting down money in the office from the cash register. So us employees that were left over, we still had to, you know, we had to straighten up the store and recondition it and clean stuff and just, you know, <clears throat> basically just recover the store. Here it was. I was organizing the children's books, and you can, you'll kind of hear that in the recording. What was it? Not far from me, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 feet away was a group of three females. Only one of them was doing work. Two of them were standing there. One of them was talking that was standing there not doing any work. The other that was standing there not doing any work was just listening. And then one of them that was talking was actually doing work, you know, hanging, you know, putting stuff back on hangers and all that. <clears throat> And, uh, <clears throat> anyway, and the other guy, you know, that was there, he was sweeping the floors in between aisles. And then I was just putting away books and all that, and I heard some just really, just, you know, well, sexual, objectif sexual objectification of men and all that, where, um, uh, one female employee was sexually objectifying men in conversation. I'm like, you know what? This is really, this is really, you know, solid gold stuff almost, <clears throat> or at least silver. So nobody was looking, and you know they didn't always have direct eye con or you know direct visual, you know, uh, contact with me. So I get this voice recorder out of my pocket, you know. Turn it on, start recording, like, engage the hold button so you can press buttons and it won't disrupt anything. And then, like, stick the thing, like, in my belt. 
and all that. Uh, drape my shirt over top of it, my work uniform. Uh, and then proceeded to record them. As And then by the time I got around to recording, they had switched to talking about, you know, basically acting like sluts. And doing slutty things and that sort of thing. And where they would dog on each other. The females would dog on each other and, you know, accuse each other, you know, call each other out for being sluts and stuff. This was women doing it to women. You know, and I got this recorded, you know, in case you want to hear it. And, and just, seriously, your arguments are not going to hold up, Joe. And you're taking up a losing position. And you can come on my YouTube channel, which is Validation Warfare, and just spew your ignorance on there. And that's fine. You know. Um, now, one dude I had to block a while back because he's making threats. He said he's going to rape my chubby ass. He says, he says whenever, he finds, he, whenever he finds me, he's going to rape my chubby ass. Uh, yeah, I made a video about that. Um, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I blocked that guy. Um, and then Skershaw 2000, he just wouldn't talk about relevant stuff. See, Joel, like, what you're talking about, you know, it, it does get on my nerves a bit because you, you're just, you're just mangina, you're just being a mangina and, you know, talking about factually inaccurate stuff and just kissing up to the female because I guess that's how you feel like you're gonna earn your validation or something or whatever. But what you're talking about is relevant. You know, we're having a discussion, and that's fine. You know, you're not bullying me. You know, I haven't noticed you doing anything like that, so we're fine. I mean, you just keep on posting. I mean, I might or might not respond. It just depends how busy I am, you know? You know, with projects, my job, and stuff like that, you know? So I might respond right, right away, or I might not. You know, but what you've done so far, you know, just posting the, the the stuff that you post, it's within what is acceptable. Okay, I, mean, I don't agree with what you said, and that's fine, I don't have to. Just like you don't have to agree with what I say. You know, now, if you want to be blocked, or whatever... Then you'll just have to act more like Skershaw 2000. All he would do is just, he would just instigate. He actually he did fit the definition of a troll, and he just wouldn't shut up. I mean, like you know, like he would just say horrible things, and then he would go in so much detail about the male genitalia. It may you know I'm like, why is this guy talking? in detail about the physical attributes of, of of the penis. Like, why is that even necessary in the conversation? Nobody even did it except for him. So, several people called him out and uh, basically uh, suggest, implied that he's gay, that, that Skershaw 2000 is, is a homosexual. Because, you know, if he's not gay, then why is he, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the penis in such detail... And almost seem you know he almost seems like he has a like a certain joy or like indulgence in doing so, and that's why we made fun of him. And then after a week of him just spewing a bunch of stuff, um, you know, and all that, then um, you know I, I blocked him because he didn't have any any more relevant input. You know, I, I let him spew his venom for a week. He had his week to say his crap, and then I was done with him. <clears throat> but sooner or later, Joel, sooner or later, you'll probably be betrayed by a female. And then maybe the things I talk about will finally set in. Oh, gosh. And it's not me that hates women. It's women that hate themselves. You know, like, <clears throat> you look into um, what Catherine Q. Becker did to her husband just because he wanted a divorce. That was in 2011. She caught, Well, she drugged him, 
uh, tied him to the bed, waited for him to recover and wake up, and then she cut off his penis with a kitchen knife. And then called the cops. And when the cops came there, she told them, He deserved it, man. Yep. All kinds of, well, look at what Jodi Arias did. And look at her. She looked like a, a nice, pretty young girl. Well, she was 32 when she got convicted. Because um, she's just, you know, like, I don't know, six or so months younger than me. Something like that. And, well, yeah, she's still 32, I think. But anyway, she was 2008 when she brutally murdered her her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander. And all that. And her story changed at least three different times. You know, the um, <clears throat> first uh, thing she said was, Well, I don't know where, I don't know what was going on with Travis. I haven't heard from him in a while. My, my, well, how is Travis? My. Mm-hmm. Then, the second story she told the police and investigators is, Well, yeah, I was there with him, and yeah, but there was this home invasion, and like these people tried to rob the place, and well, the home invasion went wrong, and he got shot and died. <laughs> okay, that was the second story. The third story was, well, yeah, well, I did kill him, but he tried to rape me, and he sexually abused me. <laughs> then later on, she admitted, you know, eventually. And, and if you would have looked at the forensic evidence, it would have been... I mean, you would wonder why it was not an open and shut case. I mean, seriously. Stabbing some guy 29 times, nine of which was in the back. Some of those were defensive wounds on his forearms and his hands and stuff. Uh, he was cut, uh, his neck was cut from ear to ear, and they said that the only thing that stopped the knife from going all the way through his neck was his, his vertebrae, his spine, you know? What does that sound like? It sounds like decapitation. Uh, and then, less than 24 hours later, or was it less than 48 hours later, you know, like, less than, about a day later, Oh, she's cuddling up with another guy, getting all intimate on the couch and all that. Wow. Yep. Yep. And, um, oh, it's horrible. I mean, you know, and then, well, I can go on and on. And then how about that spree shooting that uh, Valor Solanus went on back in, what was it, 1967, I think it was? Uh, may have been 66. I'll have to look into it again. <clears throat> yep. She tried to kill Andy Warhol. You know, she dressed up. She went in for the kill. And this is what women do when they... A lot of times when they do this stuff, they... they what it is, normally Valerie Solanus was known for looking very butch-like, you know? And then all of a sudden, this one day, she dressed up with makeup and lipstick and tried to look all feminine. And then invaded the space of Andy Warhol's office and they said, no, he's not up here, leave him alone, man. Or whatever. Well, she didn't want to take no for an answer. You know, oh, oh, take a no for an answer? Oh, that's only for the male gender to do, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so anyway, a woman did not want to take no for an answer from a man. Uh, so, you know, when they said Andy Warhol wasn't around, so anyway... Because they knew she had been stalking him or something like that. Anyway. So she goes up and she shoots a couple people. And then shoots Andy Warhol. Like screwed him all up. Uh, like shot him through like the lung and the kidney and like whatever. Then she takes a pistol and puts it up to some dude's head. Like right up to the side of his head. Pulls the trigger. But it misfires. It don't even fire. It just jams. And all that, but if the gun would have fired, she would have instantly... You don't survive a direct hit with a bullet to, like, like the side or the front of your head, you know, at, like, close range. Like, close enough range to practically touch somebody with the, with the firearm. I mean, survival is very, very unlikely, you know. She would have been a murderer. Yeah, she got her, what, three-year slap on the wrist or whatever? Yeah. Attempted murder. 
Yeah, and then two of those were like two of those years were like time served in like a mental institution or whatever. Yep. And um Oh yeah. I mean the history of feminism is very dark, very sinister. And look at what feminism look at what all this girl power does to the human family. I mean, come on. You know when they say the majority of serial killers were raised by single mothers? Do you even know why that happens? There's so many depths of this gender struggle that you, Joel, do not even comprehend. Keep rambling on about all that stuff. See if it gets you laid, buddy. You know? I mean, is that really what you want? And then, you know, you oh, you, you want companionship, huh? Yeah, I used to want that too. And, uh, Joel, I don't think you know how similar that you now... And how I used to be actually are. Now, how does a guy go from being, you know, a, you know, a, 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 a pushover nice guy to becoming the leader of elite MGTOW? You know, how do you, do you even know? Hey, guess what? Did you know on May twenty first of two thousand thirteen, just a few weeks ago, a um. A guy that me and the Disposable Human Doing know, we personally know him. He's actually a friend of the Disposable Human Doing. And he's just more like a, an acquaintance, associate, a, you know, a person I don't really associate myself with, but am an acquaintance because we both have a mutual friend, which is the Disposable Human Doing. This person I'm talking about, we call him the pickup artist. And that's not his name, but that's what we call him because that's what he does. He is hopelessly addicted to sex, and just like that inner circle of friends he hangs around with, two days without sex seems to be like an eternity of torture. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, the pickup artist, as we call him, seems to never be able to go without access to vagina. Some girl is always willing to give it to him. Uh, I've seen the pictures on his Facebook page. And all that. He's quite the ladies' man. They go. They, they really. They're really into him and all that. And you know, it's like he gets older and they stay the same age. It's like one of those things. I mean, he's twenty now, but he still messes around with sixteen-year-olds, maybe some fifteen-year-olds. You know, when he was eighteen, he definitely messed around with fourteen and fifteen-year-olds and all that. <clears throat> um. And he does all the stuff that men are really not supposed to do. But then again, the women are just as guilty. You know, I mean, look at it. Go look at a YouTube channel by the name of Violent Women Among Us. And look at it. You know, or, or Vagina Pass. You look at that. Every other day, the guy is uploading videos of news clips. You know, about 28-year-old teacher rapes 13-year-old male student. 30-year-old female teacher rapes 14-year-old male student. On and on and on. The stereotypical stuff that men get labeled as. Negatively labeled as. And you actually get to see women doing it. How about that one where this one woman stalked herself on Facebook. Created a, a, another Facebook account to harass and stalk her other Facebook account with. Trying to get... Dude, there is a there is a very dark nature within the female. Now, men are capable of, of horrible things also. However, there is a system uh, of, of checks and balances to where men are willing to fight each other and throw each other underneath the bus for trying to obtain female approval. <clears throat> and, yeah, seriously. I mean, look at it. Come on. You know... When I was 14 years old in the year of 1994, our teacher, uh, our, our, uh, our science teacher, was 29 years old, and he was having sex with a 14-year-old student. Oh, he went to jail. He did go to jail. And guess what I did when I was 14 years old? I seen him, you know, washing police cars out at the police station, because that's part of his duty of what he's supposed to do. And you know what I did? I was just one block down the sidewalk, you know, just the next block over. I called out his name. He looked at me, and I taunted him. I told him to get a real job. I'm sure he probably hated himself and all that for the, yeah and yeah. 
You don't even know what I used to be. I used to be doing a lot of the same things that, that you do now, Joel. I've been where you are. And I've learned and wised up. You know, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of what women do. It's time that, that they need to... Women need to psychologically evolve because they've held themselves back. And you know what? I agree. Women really are oppressed, but not systematically by men or some kind of patriarchy conspiracy theory that they've cooked up to excuse their behavior. I mean, <clears throat> look at it. Look at what was going on during the supposed height of patriarchy. World War I. About 98 years ago. What was going on during then? Men were fighting and dying in a horrible war. Many of those men were 17 years old, which was the minimum legal fighting age. They were not 18. They did not have voting rights. They did not own enough property for for the you know for the you know countries that still required a certain class status in order to vote. <clears throat> These young men did not qualify for voting. They were not eligible to vote. Yet they fought and died and bled and got burned on the battlefield and got gassed by chlorine and mustard gas and tore up by barbed wire and stabbed to death with bayonets on the battlefield all without the right to vote. What was going on at that exact same time down to the month that that kind of stuff was happening to men. Well, your favorite gender, which is the female gender, was back home in safety, back home in safety, bitching about voting rights. What does that tell you about the female gender? And what does that tell you about the male gender? <clears throat> yes, men were fighting each other on the battlefield. Yes, they were. And women were sending them there with the white feather campaign. Do you know anything about that? These societies of women, women, who would see a man of the age of 17 or older, and if they seen him in public or whatever without a military uniform, basically, if they didn't know that he was in the military, they would give him a white feather symbolizing cowardice. Now sink that into your head. And get an understanding of what that entails and what it means. That these women expected men to go over and die. It's just an inherent, just a just seething hatred that these women had for the male gender. <clears throat> yeah, th there's so much stuff you don't even know, Joel. You need to educate yourself and you need to get a clue. Okay. What, what do you want to do? You want you want to have you want to have an argument or a conversation or a discussion or some kind of interaction on the internet with me? I mean, is that what you want? Uh, do you think you're fighting Hitler here? Is is that what you think, Joel? Y y you don't even know, dude. As a matter of fact, it is people like you who are holding women back or allowing themselves. Allowing women to hold themselves back. You're not giving them the incentive to learn responsibility and to get their act together. You are enabling the perpetual spoiled brat, which is today's woman. <clears throat> I could just go on for hours telling you about how women really are oppressed. You would never even contemplate it. You would never even have known. I agree, they are oppressed. But it's not by the patriarchy. That's the thing. You know, I could go on and on. It just... Yeah. You know what? This, this has been an hour and four minutes. You know... I feel like relaxing. 
and, and watching a movie on Blu-ray. You got a problem with that? We can talk about technology if you want. We don't have to fight. We don't have to hate each other or anything. We can do whatever you want to do. But I do have rules, actually. Nobody, actually, nobody's supposed to get injured. This includes nobody's supposed to die. No property damage. No stealing. And actually, celibacy is safety. But back to the, the pickup artist that I was telling you about earlier. Did you know on May 21st of 2013, just a few weeks ago, he finally received his rape allegation? Mm-hmm. And guess what? I did it. I was going to Walmart, and I was shopping in there, and at the checkout lane, it took longer than I thought it was going to take because somebody was trying to scan a portable DVD player, and the, the, it wasn't, the barcode wasn't coming up in the system or whatever. So I got delayed at the register. <clears throat> Finally checked out. It was about 11.04. It was almost about 11.03, 11.04 p.m. On the night of May 21st, I believe, 2013. I can go check my records again and see. Anyway. <clears throat> I was walking out of Walmart at night. And, you know, these guys, like, they're around your age, you know, in their late teens or early 20s. They were walking up toward the front of the building. I didn't really pay much attention to them, and I had passed them as I was going out the door. And then, and then I heard this commotion, you know, and I turned around and looked. And then here's this dude, and he's shoving and pushing, like, hostily, very hostile, Shoving and pushing away another dude and says, Get away from me, asshole! <laughs> and, and then, so that person who got pushed and shoved walked, didn't even make it all the way into Walmart, walked out of the door again, started walking out of the building and walking out toward the parking lot and then seen me and I turned around and looked and it was the pickup artist, the guy who I actually know. And he's like, man, slave, dude, he, he, this guy was just, he sounded like he was all out of breath all of a sudden and scared. And he wasn't exactly shaking, but he, yeah, you can tell he was emotionally affected. He says, man, slave, dude, you got to get me out of here. You got to get me a ride somewhere. I'm like, I said, why? He's like, because those guys want to kill me. And I said, why do they want to kill you? You know, because I thought, you know, this guy, you know, the pickup artist, I thought he was popular with everybody, you know? One of those social types that can't seem to ever go without hanging around with friends, you know? <clears throat> you know, won't get himself a hobby, you know? Just got to waste his time, just excessive social life. So anyway, he said, those guys want to, you know, he said, because those guys want to kill me. I'm like, why do they want to kill you? And he said, because they think I raped some girl. I'm like, oh, that was my time to lecture him. I was like, oh, it finally caught up with you, and all that. And I did an inter, and, and you know, and then uh, I, and he wanted to leave with me to go to McDonald's, which is what a kilometer away. You know, not even a, you know, like. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, a half mile away. It wasn't very far. You know, I mean, you could just look across the parking lot and see it, you know, and across the highway. Anyway, and I told him, it's like, dude, you know, and he's just, he's just running on. He's like, they think I raped some girl. Man, it's bullshit. And I said, welcome to the world that me and the disposable human doing have to deal with all the time, you know, Welcome to the world, buddy. And then he's like, will you just get me out of here? And I said, if you get in my car, you're going to have to deal with me lecturing you about this situation. And he said, that's fine. I don't care. Mar, I just need out of here. You know, he doesn't own a car. He doesn't drive or anything. He just mooches off of people, and he's pretty pathetic <clears throat> um, for the most part. Uh, but anyway... And then, you know, I, I uh, use my key remote to unlock the car. And then I point to the car. And it's like, let's get in. 
and we get in, and as soon as we get in, I get this pocket voice recorder that I'm using right now. I get it out of my pocket. And I said, this right here, this will clear your name right here. And then as I'm finishing my sentence here, you can hear I already started to record. So I interview him. I'm just like, tell me your name. Blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, so uh, is this your first time being accused of rape? He says, yes, sir, it is, man. <clears throat> I lectured him for like, I don't know, half an hour, almost 45 minutes, something like that. And, um, and, um, yeah, and he's like, uh, you know, and I and I said to him, it's like, uh, it sounds, like, it looks like you're about to say something. He says, "Well, um, I, I do got to be going soon, and uh, cause cause I'm gonna call the police and tell them everything. I know where these guys live and their names and everything." And then I said, "Well, these guys are her henchmen now, and this and that." And I just lectured on. And if you want to hear part of the interview, then you know, I suppose you can hear it. And all that, and I told him like this is the risk that you, that a person takes when they pursue females. And what it was is supposedly some girl accused him of raping her and all that. But like, and these guys are basically white knighting. They're all like wanting to fight down this PUA, this guy that I know, and they're like, he said that they had like put their knee down in his neck and had him down on the ground and whatever. And we're beating up on him and stuff. But not enough to draw blood, but just enough to inflict pain. And they said, did you rape her? I'll fucking kill you if you did. Ma! But anyway. Yep. So this is men fighting down another man because a girl might have said that he raped her. Anyway. Now, the disposable human doing, he suffered a false sexual assault allegation, and it was pretty bullshit. And you'll have to listen to this video of ours. Um, it's me and the disposable human doing, we're in this video, um, and it's called Delve Into Our Sources of Motivation. Yeah. How about this one? You know, so my friend, the disposable human doing, he's hanging out at a party with his friends. He actually likes to just hang around with his male friends. But these male friends of him just can't seem to go without being around a woman all the time. You know, they're girlfriends and, and all that. <clears throat> so anyway, you know, uh, they're partying there. And there's this girl who's like, I don't know, maybe on the outs with her boyfriend or whatever. Or just, you know, and... Um, who knows? So anyway, she, you know, earlier on, she says, Well, I hope I don't do anything stupid tonight, man. You know, well, later on, you know, my friend, the disposable human doing, you know, DHD, he's there, and, you know, she, this girl talks him into dancing with her. And she says, well, the guy just kind of stands there and puts his hands up and kind of moves him a little bit, you know. And the girl was supposed to grind on him. Man. Well, this girl was grinding on him apparently a whole lot because it resembled dry humping. <clears throat> Rubbing her butt on his groin uh, quite a lot. Okay, and the girl did that to him, you know. Then later, he was bored because everybody else went off and did their own thing. So he figured he'd watch a movie. Sit on the couch, watch a movie. Because that's what me and him do. We like movies a whole lot. You know, just like we like the Linux operating system. And anyway. <clears throat> and um, so um, anyway, he's sitting there on the couch. This girl, the same girl, lays across his lap and all that. Lays across his lap. Comes up and lays across his lap. Stretching out across him and all that. Well, he thinks, well, maybe this girl likes me. Maybe she wants to be with me. I mean, you know, if she didn't have feelings for me, then why is she acting this way? Why is she invading my personal space if she doesn't have feelings for me? That's what was going through his head, you know. That's what goes through a lot of our heads, you know. So anyway... Uh, he felt comfortable enough to grab her ass. Well, guess what? A little while later, <clears throat> the guy who she really wants to get with enters the room, and then this girl practically jumps to attention, comes back to life all of a sudden, and says, 
Oh, I guess I must have fallen asleep. Why is she falling asleep on my friend's lap? Okay. She needs to take some responsibility for her actions. Unless you are to believe that women are... Path are path Unless you are to believe that women are somehow pathetic and incapable of responsibility for action. You know, incapable of being re responsible for their actions or making decisions that won't get them into trouble. See, that's the thing. I believe that if women want to, they can behave as responsible people. So what's stopping them? from being responsible for their actions. Why do they bellyache and make so many excuses? What's a hard knock life? Uh, What's well, just unfair what happens? Well, that doesn't sound very much like the strong and independent projection. You know, that doesn't sound very much like the uh, strong and independent self-projection that they do whenever they do want people to take, uh, take them seriously. See what I'm talking about? Hmm. So anyway, <clears throat> my friend, you know, he just loses interest in being there. He ends up going home. Then the next day, you know, he's texting back and forth with one of his friends who's at the party. <clears throat> and um, one of them says to him, says, everybody's mad at you. And then he's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Who's mad at me? And, and you know, and, and then the person says, everybody's mad at you. Man, how could you do that to her? How could you molest her? Man. And then, uh, you know what happened to my friend, the disposable human doing? He wanted to gag himself on the barrel of his Mosinagant rifle before pulling the trigger. Because we're told our whole life, that violating a female, or simply dissatisfying her, or upsetting her, or violating her safety, or anything. We're told that failure to serve the female's interest, or to actually betray the female, is this horrible thing. You know, we're told that, you know, that having sex with a female... When she doesn't want it, it's portrayed like it's worse than selling nuclear secrets to Al-Qaeda. You know what I mean? Whether or not it is, that, that's how it's portrayed. And <clears throat> so anyway, uh, he hated himself and he was so depressed. Get this, you know what really made him feel betrayed? A couple weeks later, the girl that accused him of sexual assault shows up at his house, the disposable human doings house, shows up at his house uninvited and unannounced to drop off a stray cat. Now, if, if my friend had done something so horrible, such as sexual assault to this girl, you know, this horrible crime of intimidation and power and sexual dominance and, you know, and the, the characteristics of a, of a horrible monster. Then why is this girl coming back over to his house later on uninvited, unannounced? Coming onto his property uninvited, unannounced, to do something like drop off a stray cat. How about a few, a few weeks after that? She shows up again. Uninvited. Unannounced. At his place of residence. Because her friend wanted to hang around there or whatever. Why? Why does this stuff happen? I think I know why. But I'm trying to get the ball rolling on the thought process. Of learning what's really going on. You see what I'm saying? The girl knows that she has no reason to be afraid of him. She knows that she was in complete control of, of, of the situation the night of the party. She knows that the guy didn't do anything to hurt her or whatever. But if the rumor doesn't circulate around, then she won't feel loved. you got to understand this. And at what age 
does this type of behavior stop? Because a month ago, almost a month to this very day, I was working in my store where I work at. I was putting away some books on the shelf. <clears throat> and this old woman, every bit of 60 years old at least, very, 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 very ugly, you know, sees me and she says, oh, come here a minute. I'm like, okay. So I walk over toward her and she says, oh, well, come here. And I'm like, what do you want? And she says, well, did you see that colored boy running around here? I'm like, what? You know, like, who are you talking about? She says, oh, well, that colored boy, he came up to me and said, hey, baby, you're looking mighty fine today. Man. You know what? I actually broke etiquette. Even though I'm an employee at this place, I broke etiquette and rolled my eyes at this woman. Because her claim and allegation was so bizarre and illogical and just impractical, I instantly did not believe it. But do you know why? Because while I did see the young black man... Uh, African-American guy, whatever, you know. I saw the guy, whom she mentioned, walk around the store looking at items. He didn't break anything. He didn't steal anything. He didn't cause any problems. He didn't stir up any fuss. He, be he behaved quite well, or pretty much like how a customer should. The only time I even heard him say anything was when he walked up toward uh, the, the exit and he passed the registers and he kind of glanced in a display case out of curiosity. And then the cashier said, you know, can I help you find something? You know, do, do you need help with, you know, may I help you kind of stuff? And he said, no, thank you, I'm fine. And then a few minutes later, he, he walked out. I didn't even see him in the same part of the building as this old woman. I seriously doubt that a 20 to 25 year old guy who looks as good as he does, I seriously doubt he's going to go up to an old, fugly, very ugly old woman and then sexually harass her and, and try to pick up on her and all that. I seriously, I cannot picture that happening. But yet this is her story. She didn't feel loved. She, women put themselves in the damsel in distress role because they understand what it gets them. They see the benefits. And look at sexual harassment right now. Or sexual, look at rape allegations right now. Have you ever asked yourself why women are doing this to each other, to their fellow sister? Look at it. You know what? I am actually, as horrible as this sounds and as horrible as it is for the men who have to go to prison on a false rape allegation, you know, I'm still in support of all these false rape allegations. Do you know why, Joel? Because this is the path toward learning and enlightenment for society. They will learn a very serious lesson they will learn a lesson when massive amounts of women abuse the system because of what it gives them. Women are, women are kind of behaving like a kid in a candy store when it comes to the legal system and making rape allegations and all that. Look at Wynonna, uh, Wynonna or Gibson, uh, the, the, the woman who accused Brian Banks of raping her. You know how much money she got out of that settlement? You know, even though she confessed to a lawyer that she had invented the allegation, she will not recant her story. Because if she does, she will have to pay back that $1.5 million that she blew and spent. She's unable to pay the money back. And that's a lot of money for an average person. She will keep that rape allegation going and going and keep everybody, as many people as possible, believing that Brian Banks raped her. And do you know why? Because rape allegations pay the bills. This is a cold, hard fact that you're going to have to eventually learn. 
Now, why is it that as horrible as, as all this stuff is, why am I in support of it? I'll tell you why. <clears throat> we just need more women clogging the system with false rape allegations and false sexual harassment and false sexual assault allegations to the point in which the system is so congested that it will not be able, it will not be capable of believing women anymore. So then the real rape victims out there will actually have to suffer. And then we can all remember who did it. We can all become aware of what gender did this to their own gender. If women are so wonderful and all this stuff like you think that they are, why would they do something so horrible as to cry wolf about rape and abuse the system and put the potential for the system to trust rape victims and put all that in jeopardy why would they do that to themselves if they were so benevolent and all that? Women are blind, and it's women that are doing it. What the f what what the hell kind of guy goes out and successfully makes false rape allegations and and actually gets? The, you don't even know, dude. You know what I mean? And it's like I could just go on and on. 
I don't hate you, Joel. You're just ignorant. You just don't know yet. But there is hope for you. You might actually learn something, just as I did. Buddy, when I was your age, yeah, I'd probably be agreeing on, like, 95% of what you say. You know what I mean? I used to be like you, Joel. Anyway. <clears throat> but. Onward. So anyway. Women are in a, they're in a state of being like a kid in a candy store. They only see the benefits to making false rape allegations. They see that they can get payoffs, settlements, sympathy, time off for work, default, you know, fast-track custody of children. You know, they call it, you know, like Aaron Pitsy's talking about, they call it the silver bullet in Canada. And get this, get, get this, three years ago, three years ago, you know, my, my former girlfriend had me go to court with her to to basically s sit in her corner and give her, you know, emotional, you know, uh, support while she battled her dad in court. Another false rape allegation that, um, you know, I was giving her my support, dude. I was total, I was total white knight. I'm like, come on, let's fry this asshole. You know, come on, let's send him to prison. Matt, come on, give him the fucking chair. You know, I wanted this dude to fucking fry because I believed, just like you and several other guys. But just when I kept pushing for this guy to be convicted and, and, and to be incarcerated and suffer the consequences because I believed he was guilty, I didn't know. I didn't even meet this girl till a couple months earlier, you know? And and that's only because she pursued me for a relationship and all that. I didn't even know she existed before then, you know? Uh, I mean, other than six months prior, you know, she came in the store and, like, asked something about a video game or whatever, and then her brother did also. I mean, but I didn't even know they existed and all that. I didn't pursue her. She pursued me. You know, and I was in a state of, you know, I was in a situation where... If I rejected her, I probably wouldn't be in a relationship. I, I know what it's like. You know, you just keep pursuing and pursuing, and then, you know, and then... And rejection is fine, because it lets you know your healthy, safe bounds. No, I'm just sick of that cycle, like I mentioned earlier, where a girl flirts with you, pretends to be interested, you know, and then which actually generates your genuine interest in her. I mean, you know, you the hypothetical... You know, the guy in the situation. And then when you express interest in her, she acts like it's a big problem and that she's a victim of, this guy will leave me alone. Anyway. So anyway, I was white knighting, you know, for this girl and all that. And, yeah. And then I'm like, come on, let's fry this asshole. Come on, let's convict him. She's like... No, I don't. I don't want to go through with it. Man, man, man. I'm like, come on, he'll go to prison. You'll never see him again, you know. And it's like, you won't have to worry about him. He can't do anything. He'll be in prison, you know. And um, all that. And she's like, no, man, man, man. I can't go through the ordeal. I don't feel like it, man. Mm hmm. Yep. And uh, her mom tried to silver bullet the situation also, you know, accuse the guy of this and that or like whatever. And what happens? Mom, well, automatic custody of the kids and gets everything she wants and all that. And the guy has no say. She totally strips him of his parental rights based on an allegation because she don't like the guy. This happens all the time. And, you know, us men, we're just going to have to take a beating for right now. You know, break a few eggs to make an omelet. But I assure you, when women, when women fuck up the system and all that, yeah, I'll be right there waiting. I'll say, didn't I, didn't I tell you people about that? Mm. Okay. And, um, and th this could have been averted? You think? You think this could have been averted? Nah, I think so. You didn't care, did you? 
got to be loyal to that female, right? Got to have her approval, you know, to satisfy some kind of... Study Harlow's monkeys, okay? You'll learn. Anyway. So. <laughs> just, yep. And, um, uh, it's almost like women are just, uh, they're just murdering the reasons to be trusted. Not all women. <laughs> a lot of them. A lot of them, though. I mean, I acknowledge it's not all women doing it, but it sure is a lot. But the thing is, all women do have the potential to be negative like this. Because all people do. It's human nature. However, it seems to be manifesting itself a whole lot in the female right now because of what feminism does. Now, feminism seems to be this mystery or enigma of, of origin. There are men who think that, it, that, that, that communism created feminism, although I do acknowledge there are similarities between Marxism, you know, communism, socialism, which all came from Karl Marx. <clears throat> You know, and his his uh, his social system and all that. You know, um, there are many people in the men's movement who believe that that feminism was created. By, uh, yeah, they believe that feminism was created by Marxism. And although there are similarities between Marxism in principle and feminism, um, what I think it is is women seeing you know Marxism come along, you know, communism, socialism, whatever. And I believe that women interpreted it interpreted Marxism to be something of interest that will give them what they want. That's how I interpret it. It's like a surfer riding a wave. Uh, because this, this female nature thing goes, goes on for centuries before Karl Marx was even born. I don't think car uh, I don't think communism you know created it. Now it may have nurtured it. It may have nurtured feminism, but I don't think it created it. Uh, look, come on, look in the Bible. You know, the you know immediately after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, what happens? Lot's daughters get him drunk and rape him, so that they can get pregnant, so they can perpetuate the human species. Now, even if that story was made up, you know, and you know, and the. You know, just just completely. Even if it was made up, it go. It just goes to show you that far back, people had concerns about that. How about Samson and Delilah? You know, it just on and on. It's human nature that I'm talking about. You know, selfishness, greed, fear, anger, deceit, jealousy. These are human emotions. But you notice a lot of times women do display them more than men. But, but that's because of, once again, the hyper-agency is, is, is imposed upon men. They are, they are held accountable, they're expected to toe the line, to behave, and if they don't, there's another man willing to knock his teeth down his throat in order to get that girl's approval. And it's been going on for thousands of years. Um, hypo-agency... You know, women aren't really held as much accountable for what they do. And if you don't see this, then you are addicted to the drug, just like I used to be addicted to the drug. I, I used to believe these girls sobbing sad stories, you know, about how they were abused by their boyfriend. And then I got to listen to it, and I, I wanted to hear more. It's like, well, tell me about this asshole. What do you do? Man. And then when you actually try to really press them and get them to tell you, it's just, well, we did this. And it's like, okay, well, what, what else do you do? Well, we did that. Well, that asshole piece of shit. Man. And, and it's just petty stuff. It, it, like, it's just, it's just petty stuff. And, but I interpret it as, like, serious stuff. And here's another thing that started waking me up back in October, and especially November, November of 2011, is when I noticed 
that many of the negative personality characteristics that women accused men of behaving like, these personality characteristics actually resembled the women making the accusations more than it did the men who were being accused. You know, I mean, come on, dude. Why Why are generalizations not okay? I mean, it's apparently it's okay when women do it. You know, they say, Men are pigs! Men are assholes! Man! So is generalization okay? Or is it not okay? I mean, I'm willing to believe that it's not okay. But if it's not okay, then why do women do it? And why is it encouraged when women do it? Why is it, why is it treated with impunity when women do it? See, that's the thing. That's my point. That's what really got me to really wake up is the double standard. If something's wrong, then it's wrong, and nobody should be doing it. You know, but then if an, if an entity does it and then claims that they're in the right for doing it, it makes you wonder, well, is this the right thing to do? Or is this the wrong thing to do? You know? Anyway, people make the same argument for the death penalty. Um, which Anders Bering Breverick, um, yeah, he's, he got life in prison. And he shot up a bunch of people and, like, did all kind of stuff, you know, uh, two years ago, you know, just, <clears throat> you know, in, uh, Norway. But, um, you know, if it would have happened in America, they would have, they would have, they would have executed him probably for those kinds of crimes. Well, they did it to Timothy McVeigh for doing something or for attempting something similar. Uh, but but Anders Bering Breivik uh, lives in a different country, and therefore they have different laws regarding capital, you know, regarding uh, punishment and incarceration and all that. Well, let's look into Anders Bering Breivik. Here he is, born in 1979, just one year older than me. You know, just born one year before I was. This guy was serially abused by his mother when he was a child, sexually assaulted on a frequent basis by his mother told by his mother that she wishes he was dead. Actually, the way his mom treated him was very similar to the way that Norma Bates treated her son Norman Bates in the movie called Psycho 4, you know, which was like a made-for-TV movie, like made-for-Showtime or whatever, uh, which I believe was the last movie that Anthony Perkins starred in, especially of the Psycho series, and then he died like a couple years later, something like that, of pneumonia or whatever <clears throat> and um yeah oh yeah yeah i mean it, it's seriously i mean it's like uh, it's almost i mean it resembles what you know there's similarities between how norma bates which is a fictional character you know the mother of norman bates uh, treated him when he was a child and a teenager and all that there's similarities to that and then how anders bering breverick was treated when he was a child by his mother. Sexually assaulted, like I mentioned, on several occasions by his mother. I think she was violent toward him. I can't remember. But yeah, she did say that, that you know, she wished that he were dead and all that. Hey, get this. Hey, hey, you like gynocentrism and what it does? Because you know what it did? It, the gynocentrism of, of the Norwegian legal system caused the the Norwegian courts to grant full custody to the mother that abused the child, you know, granted full custody to her, enabling her to further abuse Anders Breverick, and then denied Anders Breverick's father of access to, you know, and custody of Anders Breverick, when Anders Breverick's father was one of those well-off people in society, well-established, and... Yeah, go look it up, buddy. Go look it up. There's your gynocentrism. <clears throat> and Anders Breivik was so mad at the system that enabled for, for him to be abused as a child. He took his anger out on the government. Now, I totally am supportive of him being angry at what happened to him. He should. Just like in this country, we entitle women to be angry and all that. Now, I disagree with how Anders, Bre Anders Bering Breivik 
handled his his anger and frustration. I <clears throat> I support him being angry and and you know, I agree with him being angry and frustrated and all that. I think that's that's justifiable and that's, you know, he's in, I feel he's entitled to it. However, the way in which he dealt with it is a way that I strongly oppose. You know, the killing of people, the damaging of people's lives, property, so on and so forth. Yeah. He should have found another way to deal with his anger, one that was more constructive. You know? There's there's ways he could have dealt with it that wouldn't have hurt anybody. And that's the choice he should have made, but yet he did not. But, at the same time, if it had happened to a girl, and if it had been a father that was sexually assaulting the, 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 you know, the young girl and all that, and let's say if it screwed her up in the head, and she went out on a killing spree like, like Valerie Solanas did. Now, granted that Valerie Solanas did not rack up a body count as high as what Anders Bering Breverick did. None of her shooting victims died <clears throat> because the gun jammed before she could inflict any more damage. But the intent was still there. You see. She still wanted to kill him uh, and kill those guys and all that. She tried to kill three guys, as far as I remember. I'll have to read it again. But the intent was still there. Um, <clears throat> you know, and what did she get? A three-year slap on the wrist in comparison to what she should have got. There are so many cases. Hey, you know what? Not far from where I live. Not too far from where I live. Look at the Shanda Sharer situation in 1992. I remember hearing, I remember hearing about Shanda Sharer for the rest of the 1990s. I don't know if you remember that because it was around the time when you were born. I think <clears throat> back in 1992. Here's 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 the the way it's it's often expressed. You know, back in uh, '92, five girls go out into a field. Only four of them come back. That's how it's actually told and expressed. I used to hear about it for years. You know what it was? Five. Well, okay. Five girls total are involved in this. Four of them were in their early teens, and I think Shanna Sher was a preteen. Anyway, they were bullying her and abusing her and treating her horribly for I forget what reason. They beat her up. I think they tortured her. The point is, they took her out in a field and killed her by burning her body. Killed her horribly. That was done to a female... By four other females. No men were involved. No males were involved. And to my knowledge, they found out about it later. Males, you know, men in the family and friends and all, found out about it later. Later, you know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, and it was a big ordeal for, for years. It was a crime, a horrible crime, done by a female... By four other females. So how does this how does this accommodate your narrative that you know just men are assholes and have mistreated women horribly and all? How, how does that fit in? How how does that fit in, Joel? I mean, how 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 does that work out? How's that working for you? I mean, because you can keep believing what what you you've what you've told me and all that, you know. You keep telling yourself that, buddy. I mean, you know. I mean, you can do what you like. It just we can have a discussion if you want. I mean, that's fine. I mean, like I said, don't expect me to always reply promptly because you know I work a job, 
And I got other hobbies and projects, computers to fix, you know, technology implement implementations to learn, books to read, you know, <clears throat> other stuff. I talk to people in nine different countries on five different continents, most of which through voice. Um, now, I would like for you to meet a guy by the name of Barbarossa, or Stardusk. How would you like to hear Girl Writes What educate you about how things really work relating to gender? And she's a woman. Perhaps you should get a general education from Man, Woman, Myth. Care to learn something from HT Arcade? How about that cynical cynicism? I like that guy. He's pretty cool. I like Barbarossa probably like the most, though. Oh, yeah. Joel, you're going to have to get ready for a betrayal. A horrible betrayal. When you wake up to what wool the female gender has pulled over your eyes. I can go on and on. Women are so jealous of men at, at, at least a few levels. You can see it in the way they act. I never even suspected it before, but now I see it. I see it so clear. We arrived as a human species at our current frame in time. And I think that women feel that they don't have anything to show for it. And they're so jealous of it. I mean, look at it. They invade so many aspects of men's lives and dominate industries and <clears throat> and social circles and things that men have built up that was built by men for men and for men because of men like gaming <laughs> where were women 35 years ago when, when gaming was really starting to really starting to, to build itself up or get built up and all that where were they well, most women, they they stereotype those guys as them computer science nerds that are just wasting their time. Meh. Let's play with Barbies instead. It's more interesting. Meh. Want to have a tea party? Meh. Yeah. Now, back in the 1980s, there were some girls playing video games and nobody stopped them. To a limited extent, women were or females were greeted with open arms. The typical reaction I saw was like, Okay, you're a little Susie. Okay, you're into video games. I want to see if we can find something for you. Meh. That's how it was with my sister back in, you know, the, well, first of all, back in the 80s, my sister, went, did, my sister didn't even express interest in video games back in the 80s. Now, in the early 90s, she did. Um... When we got a better video game system, and and like my, I remember the times my dad would take both of us to the rental store, and then he'd have me pick out a game that I liked. I think he picked out a game that he liked, and he'd pick out a game for her that she liked. That's how I got introduced to the Little Mermaid on the NES. I remember it. This is a personal experience. You know, that happened to me like 20 years ago. It just so happened that I saw more guys taking interest in video games than I saw females. And nobody was going to stop them. I remember some of my other female friends I went to school with. You know, they talked about playing video games was, you know, was, was some of their, you know, some of their favorite interest, you know. Like, what patriarchal system was there to stop them? What what boys club was there to keep women out of gaming? There was none. It was fabricated. You know? And you look, and... And just in case you talk about voting rights. Oh, yeah. If you look historically in context, men earn the, men universally earned the right to vote just, just a couple decades before women did. We didn't vote for Nero. We didn't vote for King Henry VIII. 
We didn't vote for whoever. These people just took power. We didn't vote for the Roman emperors. They just took it. Anyway. Anyway, going on. They just... Women invade male spaces. And since when can a man invade a female space? Especially without consequence. Hey, remember that uh, the fitness place called Curves for Women? Now, under pressure, they've al some locations have allowed men, but no, it's like it's a woman's only fitness place. And I'm sure that they would argue it's like, well, now it's got to be a place reserved especially for women, so they don't have to hear cat calls and harassment until other women start doing it. Because uh, I've seen that kind of stuff happen too. Now, what about the woman that goes to, you know, a, a gym where there's a lot of men? I have been so sexually objectified. It, it pisses me off when I get called honey or babe or sweetie or whatever. Because I know these women. I know, well, I mean, I don't personally know them. It's actually customers, you know, just come in and just... I don't need to be called sweetie or honey or babe or sugar or, 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 or whatever. I don't. How is it necessary? When I show somebody how to operate a VCR or connect something to a TV or or let somebody look at stuff in, in the display case, I don't need to be called, you know, sugar pie or whatever. It's not necessary, but yet it still happens. You know what I mean? If women do not play the role of the damsel in distress, they will not get the privileges, the opportunities, the exemptions that they desire. And, you know, it's funny that I mention that because back in the late 1970s, the feminists were finally getting some of the things that they wanted really, really set up and established because they bitch and whine, piss and moan, play the role of the victim. And then and here's another thing. In the 60s and 70s, when women were, the feminists were just doing stupid crap, you know, burning their bras and all that, nobody took them seriously. But then in the 1980s, they hit upon a fuel source for their agenda that would last for the next decade, perhaps even the rest of the century. And it was victimhood. That's what they had done. Then you see all this, this stuff that you see now has its roots about 30 years ago. They found a source of power that would give them almost everything they would need for a long time. Anyway, in the late 1970s, there came a debate about the Equal Rights Amendment to the United States Constitution often called ERA. Barbarossa found a video, um, you know, from the debates, posted it up, <clears throat> and would you be surprised to find out that it was women, it was the female gender that defeated the Equal Rights Amendment? And Phyllis Schlafly, who's not a feminist, she was actually one of the conservatives at the time, you can see, you can watch her say in the video that the Equal Rights Amendment will not give women anything that they don't already have or have a way of getting. However, it will take away many of the of the rights, privileges, and exemptions that they already enjoy. Yep. At first, women embraced the Equal Rights Amendment because the Equal Rights Amendment was designed to make men and women absolutely 100% uh, equal under the law. Absolute equal e treatment under the law for all kinds of things. Military service. You know, with the Equal Rights Amendment, did you know women were going to be required to sign up for selective service just like men in order to have voting rights? When women found out about that and some other things in the Equal Rights Amendment, 
they decided to shoot it down. They defeated the equal. It was women that defeated the Equal Rights Amendment because they knew that in order to be equal with a man, they're going to have to be treated as an equal. It will end their special perks, privileges, benefits, and all kinds of things that they've enjoyed. Joel, you need to wake up. There's a lot of stuff you really need to wake up to. You can get on my YouTube channel again and post more stuff. I might respond. I might not. It might take a couple days. It might take a couple hours. It just depends. Now, unlike those pesky dames, I think you're going to have to work pretty hard to get blocked by me. And it's not just me that got blocked by those pesky dames. I, I, periodically, I'll check up on their YouTube channel, and you can just see on the discussion tab on their page, you can always tell what time of the day or when they've logged in because the comments will all of a sudden disappear, the ones that they don't want to hear. You know, it just... Yeah, and the comments ain't even all that bad. You know, it's like, you shouldn't have been so mean to Snake Plissken's my, my. You should stop false flagging people's stuff. You need to stop abusing YouTube's policies. My. Stuff like that. The only one of that type that, that didn't get blocked is where it's like, okay, now, we need to behave like... Okay, people, you need to behave like adults. My. That That's like... The only thing that didn't get blocked that's of the types of comments that I'm talking about. You need to look at it. Feminism is not about equality between men and women. Why does it have to be called feminism if it's about equality? Come on. Why isn't it called why isn't it called equalityism or humanism or whatever? Why does it have to be named something that denotes, um, you know, the female, you know, that 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 implies female, you know, or feminine? Why? Why does it have to take, you know, why does it have to gravitate itself toward a particular gender in naming if it's about equality? You see, Joel. All feminist groups, organizations, camps of schools of thought that are feminist, anything associating or identifying as feminism, believes in this universally uniting thing amongst all feminism or feminists, which is the patriarchy theory. And it is a conspiracy theory by attribute. I mean, people could talk about the Federal Reserve System. They can rant on about Bilderberg or the CFR or the Illuminati or whatever. And when people talk about these things, they are called conspiracy theorists. Okay. Whether or not the CFR exists, which you can actually look at their official website. Yeah, they do exist. Okay. And, you know, like... Anyway, you look into this kind of stuff, and society puts it in the category of conspiracy theory. Whereas, uh, you know, feminine, you know, the theories of, of patriarchy theory is equally cockamamie, bizarre, unsubstantiated stuff. At least ever bit as much as all the you know the, the the Bilderberg New World Order stuff. Every bit as, you know, as as bizarre sounding and all that. But yet everybody chooses to believe, you know, society chooses to embrace the conspiracy theory of the patriarchy. And, it, and the patriarchy is a invented conspiracy theory. I mean, come on. If there was some all-powerful patriarchy, then how did feminism even get even get an opportunity to, like, take root and grow. No, men got out of the way, or they embraced it when females said they wanted something throughout history. 
I'll tell you this. Women are oppressed. They're not oppressed by patriarchy or a boys club or whatever. They're oppressed by their own biology. And that's the truth. The core truth of this kind of stuff. Look at it. They whine and, and just gripe and complain about having to make the choice between having children and working a career. That's their real oppression. And they're envious of men for not being burdened with this. So in order to get back at men for having what they perceive as the privilege of not being burdened with childbirth or, or whatever, they impose a bunch of restrictions on him. They make him jump through extra hoops. They slander him. They defame him. They mock him. Even when he's a, a, a sexual assault victim. And all that. And they just treat men in ways that they don't want to be treated. Now some women do treat men nice. And that's appreciated and that's good. But they are the exception. They are not the rule. Because any woman... Whenever she gets frustrated enough, whenever she feels stepped on enough or doesn't feel loved enough, she will step upon a man and she will result to the, the negative sorts of behaviors because just about anybody will. You know what I'm saying? It's human nature that we're talking about here. And women are human also. And that's the truth. You need to get it through your head. You need to understand Here's another thing. You know, women rant on about all the pains of childbirth. And, meh, epidural. Come on. We're in that age now. We're in that time period where the epidural is very common. Why do you hear about women going, you know, going, you know, opting out of the epidural and, you know, going through Lamaze clashes like the natural childbirth? Meh. Come on. Look how many women want C-sections so they can escape, you know, the pains of giving birth and all that. Come on. Women can get so much of the stuff that they want and need. They just rant and bitch and whine so they can get even more. Okay? Now, I've been talking to you for, over two, for just over two hours now, trying to educate you. And here's another thing. Here's another revelation. Not all women get pregnant. Not all women give birth. Not all women become mothers. They have a choice, you know. So it's a thing. You, you want to know another little mystery, you know? I, I've been really thinking. And the common denominator in all these supposable horrible crimes against women, you, you analyze the core root attribute of it, of each one, and it said a woman didn't get her way. Okay, how about sexual harassment? Okay, she don't seem to have any problem when the hot guy that she's interested in makes passes at her or, may, or cat calls. No, she gets a self-esteem boost. But when that nerdy guy or that guy who's unattractive or socially awkward, when he does it, oh yeah, then it's sexual harassment. Why is that? Now, they say the definition of sexual harassment is unwanted. Keyword, unwanted uh, sexual interaction or, or attention or whatever. Okay. What is, what is the difference between uh, rape and consensual sex? The lack of consent. Therefore, the lack of a desire for the woman to want it. It simply isn't. She just didn't want it from that guy or whatever. But there's, uh, I tell you what, this is why I will not get around another woman again, especially in private and especially when she's feeling in the mood or, or been drinking or whatever. Because I'll tell you what, a bitch will just about rape a guy whenever she, whenever she gets drunk. Yeah, try to convince me that's not the case when I've actually been through it. You know what I mean? They do. Women are just ashamed of their own nature. That's what feminism is about. It is a female nature apology movement. Also functions as an anti-defamation league. 
what entity, what kind of person would want special privileges, protection, provision, preferential treatment, and all that at the cost of another entity? A selfish person would. Just like all those customers that treated employees like shit at fast food restaurants and in retail outlets and all that. Women want a monopoly on suffering and misery so that they can get what they want. They know that the system was designed to protect the weak from the strong. 